ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 207 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And I would like to announce that uh, not only, guys, have we officially passed the two-month point of hitting those weekly fucking episodes without a single missed episode, all right? Ever, ever since, I, the, the big announcement is ever since I decided to do a podcast every single week and put heaps of effort into them. I would like to say I'm very excited about this. The views are up, right? Not only that, though, every single fucking episode has been demonetized by YouTube. Thank you very much. I love that. I hate money. I hate... You know what? I don't even want to make a profit. What I want to see is that red line. I want to see that red line and I want to see it go down. But that's my bottom line. Thanks, YouTube. All right? Obviously, some Australian cunts screaming about cafes for an hour every week is absolutely reprehensible, and you can't have it on your fucking website. Advertisers won't like that. So what I'm going to do instead is instead of doing the podcast, I'm going to do something that clearly YouTube loves. YouTube loves this, and so do advertisers, okay? What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to read the lyrics to Cardi B and Megan The Stallion's song, Wet Ass Pussy, because obviously that's what YouTube wants on their fucking website. Wet Ass Pussy, okay? That's what they want. This hit number one trending, all right? Have you seen the film clip? Now, I'm not trashing Cardi B and, and Megan The Stallion. No issue with them. The song is a certified banger. What I have an issue with is apparently I'm not allowed to say cunt in my fucking videos, but these whores can wear nipple tassels, dress up in bondage and talk about how wet their pussy is and that's gonna hit number one trending for nine-year-old girls to see it and be like oh that's what i'm good for being a whore all right apparently that's what you know that's what holden wants to use to sell their fucking cars so that's what i'm gonna do on this podcast i'm just gonna read the lyrics <clears throat> whores in this house there's some whores in this house and they say that eight times in a row <clears throat> i said certified freak seven days a week Wet ass pussy, make that pull out game weak. Number one on trending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and them and a mop for this wet ass pussy. Give me everything you got for this wet ass pussy. Uh, then it goes beat it up. Now, as, 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 as you know, look, I'm not going to say that one because uh, I realize that there might be limits to this bit. You know, while I, while I, while I think I am enjoying talking about having a wet pussy, I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to drop an N-bomb at the start of the podcast. I would like to keep the channel. Uh, beat it up, ninja. Catch a charge. Dude, how much better would this song be if it was about the Fortnite streamer ninja? Let's, that's what I'm going with for, for now. Beat it up, ninja. Catch a card. Charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Advertiser friendly, number one on trending. Hop on top. I want to ride. I do a Kegel while it's inside. Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. Number one on trending on YouTube. Me saying cunt not allowed. This pussy is wet. Come take a dive. Tie me up like I'm surprised. Let's role play. I'll wear a disguise. I assume she's talking about Ninja's Fortnite skin. I want you to park that Big Mac truck right in this little garage. Make it cream. Make me scream. Out in public. Make a scene. Sounds like rape. I don't cook. I don't clean. But let me tell you how I got this ring. Now, I don't have a problem with the song. I actually think it's a certified banger. And if you want to rap, if, if rappers have been talking about their cocks for the longest time, if two whores want to come around and talk about how they have the wettest pussy in the game, I'll allow it. All I'm saying is I've been saying fuck and piss on my show and apparently that's not allowed, but you can refer to your pussy as a garage and that's all good number one on trending. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Quick, jump out before you let it. You let it get inside of me. She's talking about cum, but I can't say fuck. I tell him where to puss it. Never tell him where I'm about to be. I'll run down on him before I have a ninja running me. Uh, it is, once again, this song is about the Fortnite streamer ninja. Talk your shit. Bite your lip. Ask for a car while you ride that dick. Yeah, okay, guys, I think you get the picture here. What I'm saying is, apparently my show, Spearhead Sundays, is no good. No advertiser wants to, wants to be on this shit, but apparently this shit's all good, okay? You can talk about your creamy pussy, but if you say fuck, 
and you're a YouTuber, you get demonetized on YouTube. That's awesome. That's fucking sweet. And you know why? The answer is, ultimately, because every YouTuber is a fucking pussy and they won't stand up to the guidelines. That's all. If all of the YouTubers just went, you know what, YouTube, if you want to advertise with me, I'm going to say fuck. If we all just fucking said it, it'd be fine. That's what all these uh, music labels did. All these music labels banded together and were like, hey, YouTube, if you want our music, they're going to talk about pussy, they're going to corrupt the youth, and they're going to say fuck, and they're going to talk about spitting in mouths and getting cum in their pussy, and if you're not with it, we're not putting it on there, we'll build our own website, we'll build Vivo. Yes or no? Do you want the music? And YouTube went, well, I guess I want the fucking music. If we all did that shit, it'd be over. That's why I'm not fucking censoring myself. You know what? I did it for my latest video. I decided not to say g'day cunts. It got, and it got monetized. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say cunt. Because if this, if this bitch can talk about getting her, asking someone to spit in her mouth and come in her pussy, I'm going to say cunt. All right? She's literally written a whole song about her cunt. It goes for three minutes. I just say it once and I can't get ads. What's going on? So guys, what I'm saying is support me on Patreon because... Uh, uh, YouTube does, just doesn't want swearing. This is what they want, apparently. This is a good YouTuber, you know? You film a dead body in the forest and scream about getting spat in your mouth and that's, you know, that's all good. Me, an Australian man talking like an Australian man, it's not on. Um, this episode, uh, speaking of Patreon, is going to be an extra long episode for patrons. So uh, for everyone else, I've decided what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do extra long episodes now. So the podcast for free listeners is still going to go for an hour, but uh, I'm doing an extra half hour every single week for Patreon supporters. It'll probably end up being more than half an hour. You know what I'm fucking like when I ramble. Um, but uh, that's starting with this episode. So if you want the full episode, go to patreon.com slash Spears. Support me. Any of the tiers that are on the website, you get the full episode and you get it early starting with next episode so well this episode will have the extra half hour the early episodes will start dropping next week because i'm recording this one on a sunday obviously all right so if you want extra shit uh that's gonna be good this week uh, also, I'm going to be using that extra half hour for the real fuck stuff. The stuff that's really going to get me in trouble. And uh, this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, The Matrix being uh, an anal- uh, a trans, an allegory for the trans experience. Because, uh, of course, it is. All right? The Matrix is actually about trans people. I'm going to be talking about that in the Patreon version because I uh, can't be bothered with the fucking mob. All right. Um, cool. Now, uh, Jake Paul's house has been raided by the FBI, and uh, I, I for one, think that this is uh, an absolute uh, misstep of justice. Free my boy Paul. Free my boy Jake Paul, okay? So what? He wants to participate in the looting. Who doesn't, all right? I saw that looting shit. My my first thought was immediately, when I saw that police station on, fu- on fire, I'm not going to lie, my first thought was, fuck yeah, that's sick. Let's burn it all down. There's something great about just destruction for for just for the fun of it. You know what I mean? I come from vandalism. It, as far as I'm concerned, all of those um all those rioters, they're better people than me. I used to smash shit for fun. At least they're doing it for a cause, you know? Or at least some cunts are pretending to do. No, for real. The lo- the looting is fucked, but you, you can't deny it. it looks a bit fun. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it looks a little bit fun. Yeah? Like if you're a vlogger, of course you want to vlog the riots. That looks like fun. Huh? You need that clickbait. You need those views. At least it's not a dead body. You know? So what? Oh, a few windows get smashed. I need those views. Huh? You mean you look at the state of YouTube. I say, can't my video get suppressed? I don't have a pussy to start rapping about. I don't want anyone to spit in my mouth. I got to start filming riots. That's what it's about. Free my boy, Paul. So what? He fucking, oh, he filmed in the, in the, in the riots. Who cares? All right? Let the man live. He's one of the most creative voices in our generation, all right, Mr. Jake Paul? The superior Paul brother. I'm going out there and I'm saying it. right? I'm saying it right now. He's more entertaining than Logan because fuck, I love a car crash, huh? Sure, it's fine watching those NASCAR, you know, 100 cars going around in a circle 100 times. Sure, that's fine. That's cool. And, and you know what? The guy who wins, I'm happy for him. He's a good driver. He's probably sponsored by a lot of brands. He can drive fast and he can avoid crashes. That's great. I'm happy for him. But that's not why I'm there, you know? That's a little bonus. What I'm really here, why I'm watching NASCAR in general, is for the fucking 
crash. I want to see a car do 60 flips, land on the roof, catch on fire, and then somehow the driver crawls out and goes, I'm fine! And everyone goes, fuck yeah, he is! That guy's a sick cunt. And that's Jake Paul. He's the guy who keeps getting into that fucking 30 car pile up doing 50 flips, landing on the roof, and somehow he gets out of it live and goes, I'm still rich. And everyone goes, fuck yeah. You know, while he's crashing, everyone goes, I hope this time he dies. But but when he gets out and stands up, everyone's like, fuck yeah, I'm going to watch him until he does it again. You know? And that's what this is. This raid, it's another car crash, you know? So what? He's participating in the looting. Who doesn't participate in looting, all right? Who doesn't love a bargain? You can't get a better bargain than free, you know? All you cunts out there not buying something until it's 50% off, you're stealing from the business. You wanted that item. You waited for the sale. You should have paid full price, you fucking thief, all right? You're just as bad as Jake Paul. Me, I only, I exclusively pay full price or steal. I'm a, I'm a good consumer, you know what I mean? Because, oh, you think you're better than me? What, you fucking, you bought a t-shirt for 50% off? I bought one t-shirt and I stole another t-shirt. We're the same, huh? Think about that. I'm mathematically correct. As long as you buy a t-shirt and then steal another one, so you basically just got one, two t-shirts half off. <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to sit here and try and... um try and commend Jake Paul for looting businesses during a fucking riot. I'm as funny as the bit is, I can't I can't justify it. Uh, that being said, he hasn't done anything wrong, okay? So what? He fucking participated in the looting. Who cares? Who doesn't love a bargain, yeah? So oh, what? He left an he left a fucking anti-tank rifle in the hot tub? What if you're in what if who wouldn't do that? Huh? It, you know, if are you telling me that if you had a hot tub and an anti-tank rifle, you wouldn't put those two things together? That fucking thing looked like uh, that special agent. Remember when those the, when Trump did that rally and there was that fucking giant special agent carrying a gun that looked like it was the length of three cunts? It looked like he could shoot it, and it would and and that gun was so powerful that the very act of shooting the gun in any direction would be a suicide because it would go through everything in its path, orbit the earth, and then hit you in the back of the head. That's how powerful that fucking gun looked. And that's what Jake Paul seemed to have next to his hot tub, and good on him, okay? There's nothing like a good soak and a fucking a uh, anti-tank rifle to, to finish the day. After a hard day's work of running around, filming cunts, stealing and burning down small businesses, who doesn't want to sit in a hot tub with whores and shoot a gun at just the neighbors? You know he's doing that shit. I mean, before he had a fucking jet ski, he was doing backflips in his pool, making all the pool water go into the neighbor's house, destroy all of their fucking grapes. Everyone wanted us to care about that. Hey, fuck your grapes. You live in a mansion. I don't give a fuck about your grapes. There are cunts that have never seen a grape in their life. They probably they probably suck my dick for a sandwich. You want me to care about your fucking grapes? Fuck your vineyard in the backyard, bro. There are real problems. Let Jake Paul do his backflips. That's the price of entry. You know? If I was living in a fucking mansion and some young cunt with 20, who was 20 years old with... If some guy has more millions than he has years on the planet, let him do backflips in his fucking jet ski, all right? That's, that's a clear indicator that the system's fucked and uh, he deserves it. You know what I mean? You got a vineyard. Oh, remember that when some cunt was talking about their fucking vineyard? I remember I started making jokes about it. People were like, just because somebody has money doesn't mean bad things should happen to them. I'm like, no, but that also means that I don't have to give a fuck about them at all, and I absolutely will dunk on those cunts. I'm, uh, I'm bored making fun of all these vloggers. Now I'm just going to comedically defend them. Every time they do something fucked, I'm just going to sit on Spearhead Sundays and tell you why you're wrong for not liking them. Because uh, that's a, a lot more difficult. And to be honest, with this quarantine, I need a fucking challenge. I, am, I really miss bombing. That's, I've, I've realized that. I was at the park again. I'm that cunt who feeds ducks, bro. I was at the fucking park thinking I was all sad I had, a whole, I had a whole day off because I felt sad, because I'm going insane, because I can't do stand-up. I've gotten to the point where I fucking miss bombing. 
right? I used to miss stand up and doing well and people laughing. That's my passion. But now I would give anything to go to an open mic night and stand up in front of 12 people and just say the most obscene, heinous shit and just to no laughter, to silence, to even just horrified gasps. I miss even that. That's how much I miss this stand-up shit is I really just want to get up there and just fucking horrify a couple on a date. They didn't know stand-up comedy was going to be on, but that's fine. They'll listen. They're respectful. A few comedians get on. They tell their silly little PC jokes. I'm like, oh, these guys are pretty good. And then the biggest, tallest cunt they've ever seen in their life gets up and just starts ripping into them. That's what I miss just ruining a first date with comedy that they that they just weren't ready for. You know, I've only got five minutes. I don't have time to warm them up. I'm going straight into the Epstein gear. That's what I miss. I missed, I missed that shit, bro. Just getting up there and horrifying cunts. Um, hope you guys are doing all, well, all right. I would like to say that uh, once again, the uh, the, uh, the quarantine clairvoyant strikes again. Clairvoyant coronavirus quarantine king strikes again. I fucking called it. Melbourne goes into lockdown the day after I said it would. Praise me now. I want you to... I, you must believe 100% of all of the things I say at all times. I've never been wrong. I've never been wrong in my life. Everything I say comes true. I'm a psychic. I'm even more magic than those witches I was trashing on Twitter. Listen to me at all times. No, seriously, don't. I'm a fucking moron. I got no medical degree. But that being said, listen to me more than you listen to those cunts on Facebook. COVID-19 isn't real. The lockdown is to, isn't to lock down everyone. They're actually saving thousands of children who live in the tunnels underneath Melbourne. You know that that's actually a real conspiracy? I was looking into it. Apparently, the lockdown in Melbourne is not actually uh, about uh, COVID-19 at all, which is obviously fake. It's actually to save thousands of children that have been living in the tunnel system underneath Melbourne. Hey, I'm all for elites fucking kids. That came out wrong. I'm all for... The idea that elites, that's still coming out wrong. I do believe elites are fucking kids. There we go. I got it. They're definitely doing that. But hey, man, they're not doing it in a tunnel underneath Melbourne in Australia. Huh? Can we get that fucking, can we agree on that, please? If I'm a billionaire and I want to fuck a kid, I'm not going into a tunnel. I'm going to an island. We just discovered that all right we know that is true you go to epstein's island you fuck a few kids it's caught on film all of a sudden you're an asset for the fbi we know that's true why do we have to muddy the waters and you really think tom hanks is gonna go all the way to fucking melbourne to fuck a kid under a tunnel in the dirt no no fucking way let's have a little bit of common sense please If a billionaire wants to fuck a kid, they're going to do it in style. On an island drinking a mimosa. They're not going to Australia. A 16-hour flight just to fuck a kid when I could be on an island? No way. I've seen what Flinders Street Station looks like after 12. I'm not going there. That doesn't get me in the mood to fuck. Oh, what? Are you going to go into a tunnel? No, I'll just go to Thailand. Why does it have to be the most evil shit people can think of? Often, with evil cunts, it's just simple. I would like more money. That's why I killed this person. I am attracted to children. That's why I fucked one on an island. What's with all this satanic ritual bullshit, adrenochromes, terrifying children, all of that stuff is just trying to make this shit sound scarier than it is because it's honestly... Believing all of this wild, satanic, ritual, adrenochrome, super scary shit is actually less scary than the reality, which is some of us are just fucking evil. Some of us are just bad people. Hitler was just a guy. He wasn't special. He was just a dude who was charismatic and hated the Jews, and that's all. There's no, like... These cunts aren't like out there fucking doing crazy satanic ritual. They're just fucking kids. And if we stayed there, everyone would sound less crazy and you could actually lock up some of these cunts. 
Instead, if you're trying to make me believe that Tom Hanks never had COVID, he's actually performing satanic rituals in a tunnel underneath Melbourne, I'm sorry, even if he is fucking kids, now he's getting away with that shit because I'm not believing any of the crazy shit surrounding that. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's nuts. This conspiracy theory shit, if people just believed the most reasonable shit, which is just some people want to fuck kids and some, and a lot of those people are really famous and they're attracted to to those positions of power and, uh, pedophilia allegations are used to control, uh, public figures. That's all. You know what I mean? That's it. It's fucking crazy, bro. A tunnel system full of a thousand, a thousand, one thousand. No, I'm sorry. There's no tunnel there. You know, I saw some, some fucking post. Husey put an Instagram post up, just a regular one. And some cunt goes, looking a bit haggard there, Husey. Not enough adrenochrome. (laughs) Yeah, bro. Husey's in on it. It's got, it's Ellen, Jeffrey Epstein, Tom Hanks and fucking Dave Hughes. Yeah, dude. Re- you reckon? No. Hughesy's always looked like shit. That's his head. <laughs> you, you reckon Hughesy every every after he finishes his fucking radio show, he goes, "All right, now it's time down. To, time to get down to the tunnels." Shut up, bro. That's how that's how infected Australia is by American culture. We're trying to adopt their fucking conspiracy theories. Bro, even if that shit is true, Husey's not involved, you fucking dickhead. That's so... I, I reckon I laugh for three days about that. Not enough adrenochrome, Husey? For fuck's sake. He's 50-something. Let him be old. That's what that shit is now. Dude, I reckon... You know what? I think this whole... Adre- but the adrenochrome, from what I've looked into it, basic conspiracy theory... Uh, the idea is, I haven't looked in it too much because it just gets batshit, but basically uh, the idea is if you terrify and torture a child, it will release adrenaline uh, into a specific part of their body and then you kill the kid and then you harvest the adrenochrome and then you drink it and that gives you eternal life or youth. And that's the, the basic idea. Uh, and that's why all of these celebrities look so hot and so young. It's definitely not all of the cosmetic surgery they've been getting since it was invented, right? It's it's like, oh yeah, it's like, why does it have to be the most difficult, most outlandish shit when it's really, ah, uh, she probably just gets a facial and plastic surgery and a nose job every now and then. I don't think she needs to torture and rape a nine-year-old to get good skin, you know what I mean? I reckon that adrenochrome shit, that conspiracy, is is actually in itself a conspiracy started by the cosmetic surgery industry. Because now what happens, you'll see it in, in every every older celebrity's Instagram. If they ever post a photo of them looking tired or them looking like shit, all of the comments are full of, oh, looks like you're going through adrenochrome withdrawal, all right? So now you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Because if you stop getting cosmetic surgery, if you let yourself age gracefully, now all of a sudden you're going through torture and raping kids withdrawal syndrome, all right? So you better get your fucking facelift, otherwise everyone's going to think you've been fucking kids and then you stopped. Man, why can't it just be a lot of pedophiles are in Hollywood and that's it? Why can't it just be that? Why does it also have to be all this other satanic ritual bullshit? It's because people don't want to accept that evil cunts are often just human. And power corrupts and money corrupts. Then that's all. There's no fucking evil powers infecting and people doing spiritual shit and cunts doing satanic... That shit's, to me, I don't see how that is more likely than, oh, I think Kevin Spacey just like fucking little boys and that's all. Is that so hard to accept that some cunts are just fucking evil? Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? What am I talking about in this episode? Um, guys, with that, do you think that do you think that the that 
this would be so fu- funny if this gets monetized. This episode, I actually agree with. This should be demonetized. No one should see this. Um, okay, I wanted to talk about another thing. I want to talk about this. This shit's been shitting me for so long, okay? Uh, ever since I saw it, there's this big beef now between Twitch streamers and YouTubers arguing with each other over who has the harder job and both the other people calling each other lazy and saying their job is easy. YouTubers are looking at Twitch streamers going, oh, all you fucking do is sit there and watch YouTube videos and eat food for eight hours a day. You're not even good. You're not reacting. It's bad. It's easy. You're lazy. And then Twitch streamers look at YouTubers and they go, oh, you're not, I'm sitting here for eight hours every fucking day. All you do is upload once a week. You do 10 minutes of content once a week. I'm doing 30 hours a week. You're fucking lazy. Guys, I'm here to say, right? I have a YouTube channel. I have streamed. I'm here to say both the jobs are fucking easy. It's not hard work. They're both easy, okay? That's the answer. Being a YouTuber and being a streamer in the scheme of other jobs and looking at other jobs, looking at manual labor in the scheme and the scale of things is fucking easy. The answer is most of the people watching you work harder and have more difficult jobs than you do. Here's why, okay? Now, that being said, it is incredibly difficult to become a successful YouTuber, a successful streamer. That does not mean the people at the top of streaming, the people at the top of YouTube are working harder than some cunt making minimum wage laboring in the sun at a fucking work site. That's just not how this shit works. Even an elite athlete works harder than an elite Twitch streamer. Facts, all right? Most cunts watching YouTubers or watching Twitch streamers have easier jobs. And I say that as a fucking YouTuber. I'm so fucking blessed to do this job that I understand the, a big reason why I am so passionate and why I work so fucking hard. I really do work myself to the bone doing this shit because I know if this fails, I got to go back to that fucking manual labor job that made me sad and fucked my body or back to that call center office job that was monotonous, repetitive and made me depressed. That's fucking hard. Doing this shit, doing what I love every single day, it is difficult. I have to work incredibly long hours. There is a lot of risks. I I am, everything is my fault, and if it fails, that's on me, but that is not harder than my dad sitting in 40 degree heat on a fucking roof building a house, getting skin cancer and fucking his back, not harder. I'm sorry, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, you got easy jobs in the scheme of things. That doesn't mean anyone can do it, but I'll tell you what, you have a hobby that you've turned into job into a job, and that is undeniable. Okay, any job that a 12 year old does for fun as a hobby, it's not hard. My girlfriend's little little brother makes YouTube videos and streams on Twitch for fun. He's 12. You don't have a hard job. That's some cunt's hobby that you've turned into a job. I say that as a YouTuber myself. Stand up comedy is harder than this shit. I've been forced to drop stand-up comedy because of COVID and everything. I can only do YouTube. Yes, it's difficult to do it well. Is it harder than other jobs? No. And the amount of money that you can make from this shit is borderline limitless. Now, I'm not, I'm not making that money, but I know and I believe 10 years from now, hopefully I will be. That's my goal, obviously. But if I were a fucking uh, carpenter or an office worker or uh, someone working in a kitchen, a chef, I would know, chances are, this is it for me. Unless I want to own the store or start a new business, unless I want to do that, that's it for me. Do you see where I'm going? This shit is very difficult to do well, yes, but YouTubers and Twitch streamers arguing over who has the harder job is the most first world bullshit I've ever seen in my fucking life. None of you cunts have worked real jobs. This shit is not harder. I've done laboring. I worked at butchers. 
I fucking, I've even done the office jobs. I've done the sales, that shit that made me depressed. This shit, chasing your dreams, having fun every single fucking day, entertaining people. This shit is easier than that and it makes you happier if it's truly what you want. Obviously, a lot of people listening to this, I'm not saying becoming a YouTuber is the key to happiness. It is uh, creating shit and making people laugh and being a comedian. That is for me, for you, it will be different. Maybe you get, maybe you genuinely get satisfaction from your job. But I don't know. It just, it just shit me seeing all of these cunts. I had one guy I tweeted about, I, I tweeted about it. I said, um, I said something like uh, YouTubers and Twitch streamers arguing over who has the harder job while coal miners die on the job. And then some guy goes, hard work is subjective. Oh, subjective, really? Tell that to the fucking coal miner who just lost his foot. Hard work is subjective? No, it is not. It is absolutely not. Some things you are going to find easier than others, but you literally cannot tell me that sitting down and screaming about Jeffrey Epstein for an hour a week and then spending hours editing and uploading that stuff and managing an online presence is more difficult than what my father does every day. It's not. My dad comes home from work. He's a fucking carpenter, worked his whole life in that industry, manual labor, all he can do when he gets home after fucking seven hours of it is sit down. That's all. Me, when I finish, I'm like, fuck yeah. That's, I, I can do 12 hours of this shit and it will make me tired. My body's not fucked. My brain is working. I'm not out there getting fucking skin cancer like all of these people that are working outdoors in manual labor jobs are. I'm not fucking my body. I can, as long as I don't get struck down with some mysterious ills and illness, theoretically, I could do this shit until I'm 80 years old as long as my mind works. Most jobs, your body gives out. This shit is objectively easier than most of the cunts watching you. And you need to respect that, I think. People trying to say that, oh, streaming on Twitch is harder than some cunt sitting in an office every day, spinning, going nowhere, getting yelled at by his fucking manager, getting micromanaged, going insane. No, it's not. And I tell you what, if this shit wasn't easier, cunts wouldn't do it for fun, that'd all be out. This shit is a fun job. It's... A hobby turned into a job for many people. It is entertaining to do. And if it wasn't fun, cunts wouldn't watch it. Why do people watch? Because it's fun. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. So to all the people who listen to this shit and they got a real job, they're out there in the fucking real world doing real shit. I've been there. And that's why I appreciate so much when cunts support my Patreon or buy my merch or see a show or buy a ticket because I know how fucking hard they worked for that money to give it to me, some cunt who screams dick jokes every Sunday and harasses his neighbors with it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude. I, like, you know, that, that's, but that's not to say that this job is easy. That doesn't, I'm not saying that this is easy. It's very difficult. And the chances are you're not going to make it. And it is so difficult. And for every fucking PewDiePie or even people at my level, I'm not that big. I'm not making that much money. I'm, I'm paying rent and I have a little bit of savings. That's how I'm going, right? I pay myself $400 a week. That's what I'm on. Everything else gets thrown back into the fucking business, you know? Um, that's not to say this is easy, but what it is to say is some kinds of making out like streaming on Twitch eating cereal while you watch YouTube videos is harder than all of the people, than the jobs that the people who have are watching, the, the jobs that people who are watching you have. And the same goes for fucking YouTubers. And to be honest, I think with Twitch streaming and YouTubing, uh, neither of them are, are particularly hard and one's really not harder than the other. They're just different. It's real. it's kind of the same shit. A YouTuber will sit down and look at their computer and make content. Uh, while the while what the viewer sees is only 10 minutes, they don't see the eight hours that goes into that 10 minutes. Twitch streamers instead uh, will spend the same amount of time creating content. And it's if you look, if you compare the two, the YouTuber 
The YouTube video is going to look more entertaining and better than the Twitch streamer because it is. But if you were to cut down the Twitch stream eight hours down to 10 minutes, it'd be comparable the amount of entertainment. That's the appeal of the Twitch is those fucking downs and those ups. You're there for the fucking ride and the experience. Something's happening. Happening. It might be a bit of a low point, but at any moment, something fucking crazy could happen. That'd make those, you know, that half hour you sat there while it was, you know, sitting at a six, you caught the 10 in the moment. It's fucking so strange. And also, most, twi most Twitch streamers and YouTubers who are really doing this shit properly, they are doing both of them. If you're a Twitch streamer and you're not cutting up your streams into YouTube videos, you're an idiot. And if you're a YouTuber who's not doing streaming, you're also dumb. The only reason why I'm not doing streaming stuff is because I don't think I could keep it up once the live live touring stuff comes back in, which is my fucking focus. Um, I even think that stand up is more difficult than YouTube. Now that I've had the the I've had stand up forcibly taken away from me, I think that YouTube is easier than stand up. Uh, you know, stand up. You got to fucking sit down and write your stuff. It has to be way, way, way funny, a way a higher standard of quality than the stuff that I put out on YouTube. Like that's why I always say, if you like my podcast and you like uh, the YouTube, you're gonna fucking love the shows because this, at the end of the day, ultimately is not my best work. Because every time I write something truly hilarious, I'm like, oh, I can't put that in the video. I'm saving that guy. Um. I think stand-up's harder than this shit, you know? You're fucking traveling, you're running around, you have to spend, uh, you know, I got on YouTube, I pump out 10 minutes of material once, twice a week at this point uh, on with stand-up. My shit has to be so fucking good, I can only write an hour of it a year. That's not even fucking 10 minutes a week. That's about 60, se that's, that's like 30 or 40 seconds a week of good stuff, you know? So, I, yeah, I think all these fucking YouTubers and streamers sitting there fucking making millions of dollars by screaming, essentially, going, oh, my job's harder, no, your job's harder. It's like, can't the people watching you work harder than you do? Um, and that's why you should support me on Patreon. You know? Because you're working so hard, give me a fucking piece of that. <laughs> Stimulate my economy. Guys, it's time to talk about Manscaped, the sponsor of this show, manscaped.com. Uh, they've, uh, they've sponsored the show, uh, and that's amazing. And if you like my shit, uh, and you want to support me, um, definitely fucking grab the shaver. This thing's still wet. I literally just used it. That's hilarious. That's also kind of gross. It has some hairs in it. That's how far I will stand by this product. I will bring it to you wet and hairy. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. They've just launched in Australia. I am one of the only fucking podcasts they've sponsored because they realized that, uh, you know, Australia is fucking their next market and they want Australians to support this or even Americans, you know, use my code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. This thing is fucking great. I literally just, just used it. <laughs> kind of gross, but I'm being real. Um, let me bring up this fucking ad copy here, what they want me to read. I'm trying to make these ads entertaining as well. I don't want you guys to skip them. Uh, not really to do a fucking good job for the brand, just because I fucking hate when uh, podcasters who are funny do the most boring ad reads of all time. It's like, can't, if you really want to do this shit well, you make it funny. So I want to make none of this podcast fucking skippable. I want to make it entertaining, right? That being said, the copy that they've given me, it's not very good. Mate, when's the last time you shaved that quarantine bush in your pants? That is so written by an American, I can't handle it. Support for Speared Sundays is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. I like that bit. It rhymes. <clears throat> Manscaped has just launched in Australia. We've gone years without using the right tools for the job. Actually true. The last fucking shaver I had uh, tore the fuck out of my nutsack. Terrifying. You can be one of the first to experience Manscaped's life-changing products here in Australia. Look, life-changing, big call. I will, I, I'm not sure it's going to change your life. I will say, though, it's going to fucking change your ball bag. Man, mine's look, looking absolutely magnificent. Um, do not read. Host to talk about a time when he's hurt his balls while trimming or a funny grooming story. Dude, you know, actually, I got a funny, uh, using this in the shower this morning. I wanted to use it again to like properly use it. 
uh, and uh, get a handle of it. The last shaver that I had was like a really good one. I spent a, like over a hundred, like I spent more money on it than what I think it was like $150, $180. Went to one of those good shaving stores. I walked up to the woman. I'm like, hey, I want something to shave my nuts. I want something real good. She goes, this is the best one. I'm like, cool. I took it back. It did the top half all right. But if I went anywhere near my nuts or my dick, it would like, chew, it, it, it was like putting my ball bag in a paper shredder. It'd bite me. And, and, Every time I tried to do it, it would nip me and I get fucking traumatized. So I, what I would do is I would, sh I would shave as close to it without touching it. So it ended up the top half looked great. My nutsack looked like it had a fucking beard. I looked like Keemstar, bald on the top, beard down the bottom. It was no good. But this one doesn't do that, right? But because I'm so traumatized by the other shaver that I've had for fucking like a year... With this one, I, I couldn't, I kept trying to shave my nuts. My body wouldn't let me. Every time I went near my ball bag, I started getting fucking anxious. I've got, I've got post-traumatic stress disorder. I've got post-traumatic uh, shaver disorder. That should go in their fucking copy. I couldn't get this thing near my ball bag because I was scared it was going to bite me. Eventually I did, and, and it didn't. Incredible. So manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for free shipping and 20% off. If you want to support what I do and you want something in return, I understand Patreon's not for everyone. Uh, if you already have merch, if you need a shaver, no shit, fucking get one from Manscaped. Women, I assume this is good for you as well. It doesn't say anything about pussies in here, but I assume this is good. Um, I would think a nutsack is harder to shave than a pussy. I could be wrong. Uh, but men, if you need a shaver and you want to support the show, fucking get this thing. It's actually awesome. Um, and I'm on a one-month trial here with them. They're going to support the show for 30 days. If it goes well enough, they'll extend it. And I'm not going to lie, with shows gone, that'd be fucking great. Um, cool. All right, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off. All right? What else did I want to talk about? Um, oh yeah, that's right. The uh, a few people have been messaging me. They want it. They want my thoughts on the on the Isaac Butterfield joke controversy. I don't know why people want me to fucking comment on this. You know what my answer is? Who gives a fuck? It's a joke. So if you don't know, Isaac, uh, his special came out uh, and he had a particularly fucked joke about the Christchurch mosque shooting. Uh, told in, told very close to the disaster. And uh, look, I listened to the joke. I thought it was funny. Um, I But I understand why people would be offended by it. What I don't understand is uh, the actions taken after that. The cunts being bombarded with thousands, like literally, it looks like tens of thousands of comments, people going at his sponsors, people trying to cancel him on Twitter. The fucking beauty of this is though, Every comedian is cancelled at the moment. There are no shows. Bro, low-key, if I were Isaac, I would be stoked that there are no shows at the moment because, bro, I wouldn't want to go out like Charlie Hebdo. <laughs> That's what I'd be fucking worried about. There's a lot of... There, you know what? There's a... There's... Death threats happen a lot, but there's one group of people that take them that shit serious, and it's the fucking Muslims. You saw what happened to Charlie Hebdo? No, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure nothing will happen, and I wish the best for him. And I look. I understand why the Muslim community would be upset by it. I totally get it. What I don't get is fucking people going at him, trying to fucking get him cancelled, or threatening to hurt him or kill him. I think that's so fucking ridiculous. And doing that is objectively worse than telling a joke about a tragedy, threatening to kill someone, menacing someone, trying to intimidate them, trying to take money out of their mouth is objectively worse, you cannot convince me that it's not, than telling a fucking joke with the intention to entertain people and bring light into the darkness. That's what so many of these cunts don't understand about comedy. We, If we joke about a tragedy, we never think the tragedy is funny. It's horrific. It's awful what happened. I fucking read about it. I cried. Terrible, terrible thing that happened. Absolutely fucking horrific. Fuck that guy who did it. And fuck anyone who thinks that that happening is funny or a good thing. They're terrible people. But anyone joking about it, as long as their intention is to uh, make people laugh instead of uh, hurt the people that it happened to, all good by me. I did that Dreamworld joke. 
I say in the joke, and Isaac says this in his joke, the serious moment of my joke and his joke is that this thing that I'm about to joke about is terrible and not good and not funny and it's very sad. And that's the joke that I made about my joke that was about a tragedy was the tragedy is not funny. The joke about the tragedy is they are two different things. And obviously, people that are intimately involved with the tragedy will never find the joke funny and they can be offended. That's I totally understand that. And that's their right. And if I was involved uh, with... If, if I was a f personally affected by the thing Isaac joked about, I probably wouldn't find it funny. But what I wouldn't do is go and fucking threaten him or try and scare him or try and take food out of his mouth. I wouldn't try and destroy him because I would understand that it's a fucking joke. And I think that's what uh, this world doesn't understand is you... Uh, don't have to find a joke funny, but if you don't find it funny, hey, you don't have to tell the fucking world. What that makes you is a pansy, a pussy, who can't take a fucking joke and a loser who has to let everyone know that they didn't like something. I hear music all the time that I don't like. I don't go around fucking trashing it and attacking the people who made it and telling everyone who did like it that they're bad people because I understand the musician was just trying to make a good song. And and maybe they did make a good song for the type of person who would enjoy that. Screamo, I think it's horrific and terrible. But if you enjoy it, go for it. Who cares? My brother loves that shit. I fucking hate it. But I'm not going to go out there attacking the bands. This shit is so like uh, music, it's uh, undeniable. The genre of comedy that I do or that Isaac do does, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you like shit that ABC comedy makes. The stuff that says nothing, that is uh, absurd on purpose, and it's just some fucking cunt doing a stupid dance while an MP3 plays. Maybe that's the type of comedy you like. I think that shit's reprehensible, but if you like it, go for it. I like that real shit that makes you laugh, even though maybe you probably shouldn't. So I so yeah, I mean my answer's pretty obvious. I'm a fucking comedian. I'm always gonna stand with a comedian. I saw other comedians uh trying to step on his neck, and I think that's fucking gross because you know, you get rid of him, you get rid of me. Next thing you know, they're coming for you. It happens every fucking time. You take away the most offensive. Guess what? Offensive just got a little bit closer to you. Um and look, even if you didn't like the joke, I understand why you wouldn't like the joke. What I don't understand is threatening the man, sending death threats to him and his fucking, his girl. Absolutely gross and objectively worse than telling a joke. You can't convince me that that's wrong. Threatening someone's life, worse than telling a joke, no matter how fucked the joke is. As long as, I will say that, as long as your intention was to make people laugh. I, th I, I actually have a, a, maybe it's a bit of an un, unpopular belief, but I genuinely do believe that there are racist jokes that are made with the intention to make another race uh, uh, feel inferior or be seen as inferior. I think that those uh, are real. But those jokes are very, very, very rarely told by comedians because rarely is a comedian in today's day uh, is their intention to be racist. If your intention to, as a comedian is to be racist, guess what? You're not a comedian. You are a racist. If you're a comedian, your intention is always to make people laugh, to bring joy into the world, to bring, and, and for some people, not all comedians, but to bring a little bit of light into darkness. That's what I like doing. Taking a horrible thing that is objectively not funny and making a joke about that thing that is funny. It's cathartic. It brings light into darkness. So many times I've had people uh, come up to me and say, hey, that fuck joke that you told, that's, I relate to that. That's about my situation. That helped me. So many trans people came to me after the, after the joke that I told about fucking Caitlyn Jenner, and they came to me and said, dude, I love that joke. That was so funny. Uh, you, you were joking about my scenario. I fucking related with it, uh, and it was funny. And, you know, some people disagreed, but I don't give a fuck about that. I'm trying to make comedy for people who like comedy and people who, who like my shit. So I, I, I do think that there are jokes that are racist jokes. That's why I... I don't like when comedians say, oh, I tell racist jokes. Say, no, 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 you don't. You tell jokes about race. You tell race jokes. Because I think there are racist jokes. 
I mean, uh, minstrel shows, perfect example. Racist jokes. They were making people laugh, yeah, but they were inherently racist. And they were to make, uh, they were created to make black people look lesser. Dress up in blackface, do the whole thing, um, make them look stupid, laugh at them, make them feel bad, make them look and seem lesser. Those were racist jokes. Whereas someone uh, like Dave Chappelle, Andrew Schultz, Bill Burr does them as well, race jokes. Jokes about race and how we're different and how that can be funny, that's to me is not bad. Um so that's my two cents on the whole Isaac controversy. I think and well oh, the last thing that I want to say is, bro, this shit, I've said this before, and I was right again, this outrage start shit lasts literally like clockwork for three days, right? You do the joke, right? That's day zero. You do the joke, your fans and people who like comedy laugh at it and enjoy it, and then it spreads to a new audience. Then day one starts. They get offended. They share it everywhere. That shit goes viral. People are fucking outraged. Day one, everyone goes to, in this situation, Isaac's profile. Death threats, fuck you. You're a terrible person. I hope they I hope they fucking, I hope someone like, people were literally saying, I hope somebody shoots up one of your shows. I saw so many people say that with seriousness, not a joke. And it's like, dude, how is do how is that work better than him telling a joke? Like, after a tragedy has happened, wishing that same tragedy on a group of innocent people is not better than some kind of told a joke about it. Never is. Right, that's day one. Everyone goes to his profile. Day two, people who were really, really mad, and then and then a new group of people who have just seen it for the first time, abusing, harassing, going after sponsors, all that kind of shit. Day three, less people there. You know, a few new people are in, but less, less people because cunts can only care about shit for two days. Day three, it starts to die down, and then it's just stragglers. And by day three, this shit is over. You look at his profile now, right? Uh, on Sunday, I can't remember when this happened, but look at it on the first day that it started. Cunt's got thousands and thousands of comments. I think one had like 10,000 comments wishing death and misery upon him. You look at day two, it's like 5,000 or, or half as many thousand. Day three is a few hundred. He posted something today. It's got 180 comments, all from fans. A couple of people going, fuck you. That's it ridiculous it happened to, to, to dina hashim with that triple x tentassian joke now she posts dms that she gets every now and then for a laugh whereas before she had to hire security and then after three days it died off um it happened to fucking oh who else it happened to kevin hart when that shit happened and he had to fucking quit the oscars it lasted for three days then he made it worse by going on a big apology tour it happened to dave Chappelle with all this all his trans jokes and then people got over it in three days because there's some other fucking infographic that gets, that gets shared to cunt stories again. It's, it really happens like clockwork, and it's just funny to see. Um, so it's good to see that it seems to have died down, and I, uh, I hope he's doing good because it does suck. It is annoying, and it, it doesn't, it, it, you know, no matter what people say, it doesn't feel good when cunts are going after you like that. But um, yeah, my answer is I will always defend jokes. If, if the joke is made with the intention to make people laugh and not with the intention to hurt people, I will always stand by that, even if it's a bad joke, which in this case, I do not think it was bad. I thought I laughed. I saw it live. I thought it was funny as fuck. Um, and, and to me, it is hilarious that I think he'd been doing that joke live for almost a year. And it's so indicative of, oh, you just don't like that genre of comedy. Because the people who did like that type of stand-up clearly didn't get offended by it. Otherwise, this fucking uh, controversy would happen like a year ago. Um, but because people who would never, ever like his shit, no matter how they are exposed to it, even if, if they saw a video that wasn't controversial, I guarantee you all those people will be like, this sucks, I don't like it. Because it's not for them. It's not their genre of stand-up, not their genre of comedy. But, but... Then, because they were exposed to a type of comedy they don't like, uh, uh, under the lens of, you shouldn't like this, and this is bad, that's how this shit explodes, is people who would never like it presented a type of comedy they 
could they do not have within them to enjoy uh, with the idea presented to them before they watch it that they should hate it and it and it is bad. Then they watch it and then they go, oh, they're angry before they watch it and then they see a minute of it and then they get angry. Of course, they're going to fucking hate it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm repeating myself. I think it's fine. Guys, uh, that's where I'm going to end the free version of Spearhead Sundays this episode. I'm going to continue on for another half hour. I'm going to talk about this Matrix being uh, a trans allegory. I've got a few articles here. I'm going to go through it. If you would like to watch the rest of it, support me on Patreon, any of the tiers on the site. I think the cheapest one is three bucks. You get the full episode every single week. Uh, but for now, I'm just doing an hour. Uh, so for free listeners, nothing's changed. You're just not getting the extra stuff so if you want the extra stuff support me on patreon and uh if you would rather support the show by getting something in return manscape.com use code spears for 20 percent off and free shipping also grab my u2s figure it is almost gone they told me u2s.com it's gone quick um all right that's it i will talk to you guys next sunday i sincerely hope you all have a fucking shit one